Hello everyone and welcome to the first tutorial on this channel. Today I will be going through the steps of setting up a tensile test using the explicit dynamics module in ANSYS Workbench. So to start we will want to load up ANSYS Workbench and we should be greeted by a screen that looks similar to this. In the middle here we have our project schematic and this is where we can combine different modules to get the simulation that we want. And on the left here is the different modules that we can use to perform different simulations. For today, we're going to be interested in the explicit dynamics module. So we're going to take the explicit dynamics module and we'll drag it into our project schematic. We will rename it to tensile test. And now we're ready to start. So first things first is we want to give ANSYS the materials or material that we want to use for the simulation. To, that, to do that, we'll double click on engineering data and this will open a new tab. So here we have our pro up here we have our project tab and we have our engineering data tab. And we're going to use a material that is already within ANSYS. ANSYS provides you with a whole bunch of materials materials and their properties. So we'll go and pick from those materials. To do that, we're going to press on engineering data sources here at the top. And here are all the different libraries that we can access the different materials. Since we're using the explicit dynamics workbench, we will want to use the explicit materials library. Uh, these materials will more likely have the correct properties that we need it to. Uh, sometimes materials uh, within ANSYS uh, don't necessarily have all the properties to perform a certain simulation. So we'll open up the explicit materials library by double clicking on it. And here we can see that all the different uh, materials within this library are now open. Uh, we still need to be careful on which material we choose. Uh, we can see here that aluminum 1100O has a whole bunch of different properties, including the yield stress, but aluminum 2024 does not. So we need to be careful on uh, what material we choose uh, so that has the uh, right properties uh, for the simulation that we want. And we can add uh, properties for different materials too. But for today, we will be taking uh, aluminum 1100O. And to add it to our project, we press on the little plus sign here. And we know it's been added once the little book appears. So that's good to go. So now we'll go back to our project by clicking on the project tab. And we will go and make our model in space claim. So to do that, we'll double click the geometry tab here. And it we can see in the bottom left hand corner that it says opening space claim. Now with space claim open, we can now uh, CAD the model that we want to do the tensile test on. So to do that, I'm going to choose the line function in the sketch toolbar, and I'm going to snap the first point at the origin here. And I'm just going to draw the outline of the model that I want to do the tensile test of. So I'll put in the different measurements here. Complete, we can use the pull function in the edit toolbar and we can pull the face to the height or give it the thickness that we desire. And there we go. Now we're going to fillet the inner corners here so that we can relieve the stress concentration at this point. So to do that, we'll use the pull command again and we will choose the edge here and we will pull this out so that the fillet goes all the way to the corner here. And we will do that for all of these inner corners. And there we have it. Now with our model complete, uh, we can go back to the ANSYS workbench by clicking the big X here. 
now that we're back on the ANSYS workbench, we can now see that we have a check mark beside geometry. Congratulations, we are now completed with geometry. So now we're going to mesh the model and set up the boundary conditions uh, necessary for the simulation. And to do that, we're going to go into uh, the mechanical module. So we're going to double click on model here. And we can see in the bottom left hand corner, it says starting mechanical. This will take a second. Now with ANSYS Mechanical loaded up, we should end up on a screen like this where we can see the model that we previously designed. The first thing we're going to want to do is check to see if the geometry is correct. So we're going to press on the little plus here beside geometry. And here we can see that there's one uh, solid that's listed. That is good because we're, on our, we're only testing. Our model's only one solid. Say if we had an assembly, it would list all the different solids that were in that assembly. If we press on solid here, we can see all the information about it. The thing that we're going to be most interested in is the material assignment. By default, like I said before, it says structural steel. We don't want structural steel. It doesn't have the properties that we desire. So to change it, we're going to press on structural steel, press on the little triangle icon that appears here. And now we can change it to aluminum 1100 uh, that we chose from the engineering data beforehand. There we go. So material is now assigned to be aluminum. Next, we're going to want to mesh our geometry. We're going to want to break it up into a whole bunch of finite elements. In order to do that, we're going to press on mesh here. We're going to right click and press on generate mesh. Now by default, ANSYS is going to make a very coarse mesh. Uh, now we can refine this mesh and make it smaller. In order to do that, we're going to insert a mesh sizing. We're going to right click on mesh, go to insert, press on sizing here. As you can see here, we need to uh, give the command a geometry and give it an element size as well. So we're going to choose the body selector tool up here. We're going to press on our body. We're going to come to geometry over here, press on no selection and press apply. So now we can see that one body has been applied to this sizing. And we're going to come down here and we're going to right click on here and we're going to change the element size in order to make it more refined. Let's enter and now we can update our mesh and it's going to remesh the uh, solid with our updated conditions. Now what we're going to want to do is check the quality of the mesh to ensure that you know all the elements are relatively the same. There's not an element that's super skewed that could lead to some errors down the line when the program is trying to do its computation. Uh, in order to check the quality we're going to press on mesh here and we I'm already have it selected. Here we can press on the plus here beside quality and go to mesh metric. The one that we're going to be interested in is the skewness category. So this ranks the uh, elements on a scale of zero to one of how skewed they are from an unorthogon orthogonal shape. As we can see here, if we press on the little column here, it highlights all the ones of the same uh, skewness relatively close to zero and we can see that that is the majority of our model so that's very very good if we go up here and press on the column up here we can see that oh there's only one or there's only that stack of elements that have a pretty high skewness and 0 0.5 is not terribly high it should be okay uh, as we move forward Now that we know that the quality of our mesh is good, uh, we can go ahead and add our boundary conditions. The two boundary conditions that we are interested in is a fixed support at one end and a displacement support at the other end that we're going to use to pull the model away from the fixed support. So the first thing that we're going to go do is go to analysis settings. We can see here that we have a question mark, so it's going to be asking us for something. And we can see that it wants the end time for the simulation. So we're going to add an end time. And now we're going to add, we can see that that was good. It gave us a check mark. So we're going to add our um, 
boundary conditions. In order to do that, we're going to right click on explicit dynamics, go to insert, press on fix support. We can see here that the fix support is asking us to define the scope of our geometry. So we're going to choose the face selector tool. We're going to press on the bottom of our model and press apply. Now to add this displacement boundary condition, we're going to right click on the model again, go to insert, press on displacement. We're going to choose the top face this time, press apply. And we can see here now it's asking us to define uh, what the displacement of this face is going to be. Since we're trying to pull it away from the fixed support that's over here, we want this face to go in the negative X direction. So we're going to add the displacement in the negative X direction. Enter. And now we're good to go. We see we have check marks everywhere. And we have to choose now what results we want to get from the solver. What, what do we want to achieve? To do that, we right click on solution, go to insert. And we can see here that these are all the things that the program can calculate. Uh, since we're most interested in the failure of the tensile test, uh, we're going to look at the total defor deformation as well as, as the stress and strain of the different elements. So we're going to add the total deformation and we're going to go back in here, insert, and we're going to keep adding all of the results that we want to get from the solver. Now with all the results chosen that we want to get, our model is ready to be solved. So to solve the model, you're gonna right click explicit dynamics and you're gonna press solve. We can see here that this gives us the uh, current status of the simulation. And if you press on solution information here, uh, we can get information of what's going on and we can see how much time is remaining before the simulation is complete. So as you can see, this is gonna take about seven minutes to complete and I will see you back when it is completed. Welcome back everyone. We can see that the clock made it down to zero and that the simulation compiled without any errors. So let's go ahead and check our results. We can press on equivalent stress over here. And voila, we can see that our specimen failed with a tensile test. We can press the little play button to see the animation. We can see that the uh, top face here is being pulled away from the fixed support here, which is very good. And this is a pretty decent result because we can see that the specimen begins the neck at a certain point and that there is a high uh, concentration of stress right where it's necking. So that's a very good result and then it fails. So there you have it. That is the completed tensile test in the explicit dynamics module in the ANSYS workbench.